ready to go. So it's interesting. I wasn't necessarily expecting a Malamar deck that was only running two Malamar, yeah. <laughs> but it worked for him in round number one, and we'll see how it plays out here. That Bridget, of course, one of the most powerful plays that you can make on turn one, set up all those bench Pokemon in this case, get those Wimpods, get those Zoruas out there. Yeah, and Bridget is another interesting card that, you know, a little over a year ago saw almost zero play. And then once Tapu Lele GX came out, it's like, oh, now we can search for Bridget. <laughs> Hey, this is a lot better. Now I can play it on the first turn almost every game, and getting three basic Pokemon is awesome. So we're seeing it in pretty much every deck that uses evolution Pokemon. You know, you still don't see it in things like Buzzwole. Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't have time to play Bridget in that deck. You want to just be jet punching your opponent as fast as you can. But uh, Bridget, of course, still played a ton in Standard. There is also the little interesting point of Bridget is that it's three basic non-EXs or one EX Pokemon. So you can utilize it with basic GX Pokemon, but we're not really seeing that all that much right now. It's mostly utilized in stage one decks. So you see interesting interaction here. Mark plays Mysterious Treasure and actually discards his Lunala Prism Star oh. and uh, has to put it straight to the Lost Zone because it can't go to the discard pile. And then Azul picks it up and he's like, what does this even do? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's definitely one of the Prism cards that you're not seeing all that often, but it does fit in relatively nicely into these Psychic base decks. Yeah. Yeah, it recovers a lot of Psychic energy, which can be big in some matchups, but it does have weakness to Darkness, so not so good against Zorark GX. Max Elixir does hit that Psychic energy, attaching to the Ultra Necrozma on the bench. Yeah, I think all Mark really needs this turn is uh, Psychic Energy on his active. Then he can Photon Geyser for a knockout. Uh, going first with this Ultra Necrozma deck is a huge difference. I mean, going first is a huge difference for pretty much any deck, but mm. being able to go turn one, attach my Metal Energy pass, turn two, attach my Psychic Energy attack, that's a huge difference. Uh, you get to knock out this Zerua before Azul gets a chance to evolve it second successful Max Elixir of the turn, and we saw that he did hit both Psychic and a Metal off of that Sycamore draw. I mean, this is very powerful out the gate. It's scary if you're Azul, that's for sure. Uh, with a Choice Band and two Psychic Energy discarded, Photon Geyser does hit for 210 damage, which can take out Zorark GX and Glycevod GX. It's like Mark does not find the Psychic to attach to his active, though, so big missed opportunity does not get a knockout on the Zerua. Hmm. Thought I saw it in the hand, but must be mistaken in this case. Oh. Chooses to fully attach to the bench instead, set up that Ultra Necrozma. Yeah, and it looks like Azul gets his first Zorark GX up and running. No, Let's there's the a Psychic trade. in hand. Huh, so he opted not to knock out the Zerua. Interesting. Guess he just wants to set up for a big GX knockout. Single prize knockouts mm. aren't the greatest against Zorark decks. Um, they're going to be using mostly GXs, so a lot of the time, taking one prize card doesn't do a lot. You still have to knock out three GXs from there. So I could see Mark thinking, uh, I'm just going to wait till he evolves to Zorak GX. It's not like Zerua is going to knock me out. Mm -hmm. And then once Zorak GX comes out, then I can take two prize cards instead of one. Plus, it makes sense that since there are already three Zerua available for Azul, knocking out one doesn't do as much as if there, were, there was only one Zerua. Yeah. You take that one out and restrict Zoroarks altogether for that turn. Yeah, if there was only one Zuru out there, he would knock it out immediately. There would be no thought behind it. Uh, Azul is getting a great turn two here. Already three stage ones out and about to see a fourth one. This is about as good of a start as you could hope for. But you see the, the stark contrast between the two decks. When Azul does his perfect turn two, he ends up doing 120 damage. Uh, in Mark's perfect turn two, he can do like 8,000 damage. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately. Somewhere more or in less. that ballpark, yeah. <laughs> so we see more, more trades happening. I think Azul is going to have to come to a decision here if he finds double coilless energy or even grass and Guzma. Uh, does he go after Malamar and knock it out? That is the conventional strategy against this kind of deck. But against Mark's version, it really doesn't do a lot. Would he be better off just going after the Ultra Necrozma that has all the energy and kind of softening it up for a two-hit knockout? It's a bit risky knowing that there are two max potions in the deck. You don't want to commit an attack trying to two-hit knockout that Ultra Necrozma and just have all of that damage be undone very quickly. But there are only two in the deck. So at some point, Azul is just going to have to hope that Mark simply doesn't have it. 
Yeah, and Max Potion isn't even like a conventional card we see in most Malamar decks. So he might not even know there is Max Potion in Mark's deck. Uh, a lot of Mark's build here is very unusual. It is not what you would expect from a typical Malamar deck. And maybe he's using that to his advantage. You know, when you don't know what your opponent's doing, it gives you the element of surprise. And sometimes you're like, you play that card? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when deck lists are closed, it gives you quite an opportunity to surprise your opponent. Yeah. Only two Malamar being in the deck, having those max potions, a heavy emphasis on B-String and max elixir is not going to be what Azul expected coming into this matchup. Floatstone on the Zoroark retreat for that Wimpod, knowing that Alternate Krozma probably is going to be able to take a knockout here, and Azul does not want to give up one of his Zoroarks just yet. He actually didn't find energy, so he couldn't even attack. Mm -hmm. So it uh, looks like poor Wimpod here is going <laughs> to have to take, take a... one for the team. Take a Photon Geyser from old Alternate Krozma there. So now Mark will be faced with this same decision. Does he want to knock out this non-GX Pokemon and go down to five prize cards here? Uh, I think at this point, now that he's got the three energy on the bench, Ultra Necrozma, he can kind of be the first one to initiate getting a knockout here. He's only losing one energy if he discards it. And Mark's got to feel like he's in a great position. He's got so much energy on the board. He hasn't taken any damage yet. And he's even got a Malamar, but no, he passes again. He's not taking hmm. the knockout. Interesting. Does not care about one prizes. That's a waste of time for Mark. It's a GX or bust. Well, he would have to get an additional GX knockout just to make up for yeah. that prize that he is missing. It's just interesting to see. I mean, Mark is an incredible player. You see it there. Uh, I would say almost every player in this field would just take the knockout there, but... Mark, thinking a little longer term, you see a brilliant strategy there. Very, very patient. Um, and I, probably showing that he has extensive knowledge of this Zoropod deck and of what he needs to accomplish as Ultra Necrozma to win this matchup. Yep. So really patiently played. Yeah, and like I said, Mark has been around in the game forever, so he's seen all sorts of different strategies. He knows just about how every Pokemon deck has worked for the last uh, however forever. many years. Yeah, <laughs> And... Uh, <laughs> You know, sometimes you see these unconventional plays pop up where it's better to pass than to take a knockout. It's like Azul does finally find an energy, so maybe he'll be able to attack, but if you're Azul, do you even want to attack? It looks so ugly. You uh, you go in there, hit for 100 damage with Galizapod GX, your own parallel city is reducing your damage, and uh, then you probably just get knocked out. <laughs> only two grass energy in the entire deck for Azul. I know that uh, Zoropod decks don't run many grass energy to begin with, but when you're only playing two, uh, you're running the risk of some really horrible situations if you prize a single one of those energies. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you do have things like Mallow to search for cards. Nope, not playing Mallow. Never mind. Uh, looks like he's only got two grass energy. He does have one rainbow as well, but... Yeah. Yeah, pretty low on energy for the most part, and still no damage has been dealt by either player. Even though we have four staged ones out for Azul, we have five energy on Mark's board. Nobody has attacked. <laughs> Mark here probably just thinking that as soon as he starts initiating attacks, he's going to want to end the game pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, it'll be attack after attack after attack, and if he can just take out three GX Pokemon, he'll win the game at that point. Yep, and he's going right for it. Top of Lele GX, Wonder Tags for the Guzma. There you go. And he's going to go after one of those Pokemon GX. The question is, does he go for Top of Lele GX? He wouldn't need to attach an extra energy to get that knockout. But the other Pokemon are much more threatening, so you can go for things like Zorark GX. Looks like that's going to be the choice. All right, with that attach, he can get the knockout onto the Zoroark with the Float Stone attached. Put some Psychic Energy into the discard pile. You can then Psychic Recharge for a single energy with the Malamar and set up that benched Ultra Necrozma yet again. Um, do you think that he went for that Zoroark there because of his powerful trading ability over the Galisopod, even though there are two Zoroarks still remaining on the bench? What was his reasoning there? Absolutely. Uh, trade is what makes this deck work. When you start to pick off some of those Zoroark GX, the fewer trades they have, the better it is for you. Uh, Zorark's trade is only really good when you reach like a critical mass. Mm -hmm. One trade per turn is good, but it's not great. You're drawing two extra cards a turn, you're throwing one away. But once you get three out, you're drawing six extra cards a turn. You just get to see so much more of your deck. So 
Whenever you get an opportunity to take out a Zorark GX, it's a big deal. Whereas Glycopod, it's really not very threatening against Ultra Necrozma. So cut off the resources first and foremost, and then you can worry about the attackers, which aren't even all that impressive as attackers in this matchup. Yeah, we do see Azul taking what I would consider the regular approach here, going after the Malamar, uses that counter catcher. He can play it because his opponent has fewer prize cards than him and uh, goes for the first impression knockout on the Malamar. Problem is, you know, Mark, I think he kind of saw it coming. He, uh, he had an opportunity last turn to just go choice ban knockout on the Zorark GX, but opted to attach the extra energy instead. And now this turn, he can attach a second Psychic to his active, play the choice ban, and do 210 damage and get back-to-back -back knockouts. Super Rod, free Psychic energy back into the deck, Wonder Tag for that Sycamore. But now one Malamar has been knocked out. He only has one more Malamar in the deck. No Inke to set up just yet. We don't even know if he has access to both the Inke and the Malamar in his deck at this point. Yeah, he actually discarded his other Malamar with an Ultra Ball, so. Well, there you go. So he's, uh, he's straight out of Malamar at this point. And we do see he's gonna go for a big Sycamore this turn. So he's just grabbing that Dawnwings Necrozma. Good. That is not a card you want to play down against Zorark GX, and he's going to be hoping to find a Psychic Energy. If he misses, this is going to be a bad turn. He does find it. Yep, that's a pretty good turn. Uh, 210 damage, that knocks out Glycopod GX, and Mark is already down to two prize cards. Lacking energy just a little bit now, but certainly has plenty of time to even just manually attach energy and find that final knockout. Yeah. So one of the risks of taking prizes too quickly is now you're vulnerable to N. You don't have cards like Zorak GX or Octillery in your deck to kind of bail you out of those situations where your opponent plays N and puts you at a low hand size. So even though Mark is super far ahead in prize cards, he might not be far ahead in terms of winning the long game here. If Azul can, you know, get a double colorless on a Zorark, play an N, Mark's gonna have to draw something good off those two cards because the way his board looks now, he can't even attack. He only has Metallurgy in play. Can't bench anything as well, so. Yeah, the Parallel that City's been pretty big. Yeah, that third Lele off the top wouldn't be able to Wonder Tag, doesn't have any bench space. Ooh, just a ride is beating for 120 though, no N played. But the good thing for Azul is he, he hasn't taken any prizes yet, so Mark can't use B-String. Uh, I think Mark is kind of hoping I get knocked out, then I play B-String, and then I take one last GX knockout. Mm -hmm. So even though Azul didn't have an end that turn, he really didn't need it. He needs it the turn he takes a knockout. So if I had to guess, I would say Azul is probably going to be digging for end this turn. Um, either that or some puzzle of time to get back counter catcher and try to soften up the other Ultra Necrozma. This is the one way you can kind of play around B-String. You know, you could take the knockout here or you can try to soften up both Ultra Necrozma uh, before you take that knockout. And then the turn you take the knockout, you play an N and you hope your opponent just doesn't draw a B-String. And then at that point, there's so much damage on their Ultra Necrozma that you can finish it off with another Riotus beating. Trades the field blower, does find the N and the Guzma, I believe, right there off the top of the deck. So he does have access to that N this turn if he wants to use it. Yeah, he's also got a counter catcher in hand, so it looks like he's playing a couple of them in his deck. Mm. So he can make a choice here. Yeah, yeah. Like there is the second counter catcher, and it looks like Azul is going to take this strategy, try to soften up both of these Ultra Necrozma GX before he takes his first knockout. And uh, both players shown off why they're some of the best. You know, Mark early on refusing to take a one prize knockout. Azul here refusing to walk into B string. And uh, this is why these players are some of the best in the world. Azul definitely with some very powerful come from behind mechanics in his deck. Stabilizing at a low prize count for his opponent, but maybe it's going to be enough. It's scary to get to that point, but yeah. when you've been around the block as long as Azul has, <laughs> you know how to get out of even the worst situations. Yeah, and Counter Catcher is another very interesting card that uh, did not see a ton of play until pretty recently, and then people realized, oh yeah, uh, playing a catcher when 
uh, playing a catcher as an item is pretty good. And you can play it a lot with these Zoroark decks as your opponent typically takes the first knockout on a Zerua. And being able to use that as your item card instead of mm -hmm. taking up your supporter card for the turn with Guzma, it just gives you access to some powerful turns. So it looks like Mark... Lily in hand. Yeah, he does have Lily. Uh, some decks opt to play Lily instead of Bridget. Uh, it looks like Mark is trying to just set up one turn to knock out one more GX with a big attack. Azul did use armor press there, so he's going to take 20 less damage from attacks, which means even if this max elixir were to hit, he would not get knocked out. And it's going to take a third psychic energy, even with choice band, to get through that Glycopod GX. So both players are pretty well practiced in this matchup, it looks like. It's really just going to come down to the turn when Azul takes a knockout. Does Mark have a beast ring to power up that Ultra Necrozma and basically win the game? Has access to one now. We saw Azul with the N on the previous turn. Can he find another one to limit Mark's hand size the turn he takes his first GX knockout? Yeah, something else that could come up is there's a ton of damage on two of Mark's bench Pokemon. He could use the uh, not very often seen Tapu Cure GX and fully <laughs> heal both of his Ultra Necrozma GX on the bench. It seems silly, but hey, <laughs> you wiped out two of your opponent's attacks. It's not bad. All right, double puzzle, going to bring back the counter catcher and right. the N. This is the big turn Azul is waiting for. Uh, and even though, you know, he's done everything he can, he's still going to be holding his breath here. Mark's going to go down to two cards, and it's basically... Mark draws Beast Ring, he wins. If not, Azul is probably going to win the game. This has been so well navigated by Azul. Mark, obviously, largely the aggressor in this matchup. He played very patiently the first couple of turns, however, not being baited by those single prize knockouts. But Azul, consecutive counter catcher turns, trying to limit the hand size from Mark. Will it be enough here? And we see just years and years, N is still one of the most powerful supporter cards in the game, and it's no exception here. And Mark draws his card for the turn. Looks like a metal energy. That is not what he needs. Mm. And this went from potential game-winning turn to turn where you probably lost the game. <laughs> that is heartbreaking. Looks like a float stone and potentially a max elixir in hand. I think he might have... Max Potion, maybe, which ah, does not help either. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> Don't really want to be discarding all of your energy at this point. If this Ultra Necrozma gets knocked out, then all he's left with is a pair of Tapu Leles. Yeah, I think Mark's just trying to figure out what can I do at this point? Do you Photon Geyser for 80 damage? That doesn't sound very good. You try to set up Energy Drive. In this case, just going to bring up one Tapu Lele, maybe as bait. Yeah, I think his best hope is that Azul doesn't find Guzma this turn. Uh, Guzma, or even <laughs> Countercatcher, if he can puzzle a time for it. Uh, if Azul finds Guzma here, I wouldn't be surprised if Mark just concedes and moves on to the next game. I think uh, I see Guzma in hand. Trades away the enhanced hammer. There's oh, there the it Guzma. is. Guzma. Yep, that Ultra Necrozma is going down. And you see, just like that, Mark was ahead four prize cards, but now he's losing. Wow. <laughs> and what a turn of events. Very, very quickly, this game shifted in favor of Azul. And Mark picks up his cards and moves on to the next game. All right, game number one going over to Azul. Mark put on the pressure very, very well the first couple of turns, managed to take four prizes, but... Azul, with those consecutive counter catcher turns, able to manipulate the board state from Mark enough to get those Necrozma knockouts and ended up closing up game number one when it looked like he was in a pretty unfavorable position for most of that game. Yeah, that was just a fascinating game to watch. If you're, you know, starting to play the Pokemon TCG and trying to learn and get better, go back and watch that game later. That was incredible from both sides. Uh, I, I think if we saw two other players playing that match, it would have gone completely differently in so many different turns, but these are the best of the best. These are the pro players here, and uh, you see just why. That was awesome from both players, and what else can you say? They're pretty good. Putting on a clinic. Yeah.
That's what you want to see at this level of Pokemon. We're at the North American International Championships, and this is one of the final events before the World Championships, which I would expect to see, uh, well, certainly Azul at, because he is the top points earner for his region, but Mark as yep. well. Mark, too. He's one of the top-rated players in Europe. From yeah, both Germany, players, I believe. Yeah, both players will even be in day two of Worlds, I, I think Just so. the automatic birth. Yeah. It's like we're setting up for game number two, and uh, since Mark did lose the first game. He gets to choose who goes first. And what do you think? Will he go first or second? <laughs> mm, that's a tough choice. Mm, yeah. Probably go first. <laughs> but you could go second. <laughs> you could. <laughs> he has that option. Yeah. Um, but like you were saying earlier, the importance of being able to attach energy before your opponent uh, is very important for Mark as he is trying to load up as many energy onto his Ultra Necrozmas as fast as possible. For Azul, he's just trying to hit a single grass onto a Glycopod, a DCE onto a Zoroark. Not as important for him, but Mark wants to be going first here. Yeah, we see prize cards for Azul. We see two Enhanced Hammer. That won't be very important as Mark opting not to even play Beast Energy in his deck. Go mm -hmm. figure. Uh, but looks like for Mark, two Floatstone and an Ultra Necrozma in his prize cards. So potentially painful cards there. He only has three Ultra Necrozma GX in the deck overall. I think we saw him utilize two of them in the previous game. So only having access to two this time around yeah. could be potentially painful, but it looks like he does have both of them pretty early on. And Mark does start off with that Lunala Prism Star this game. We saw him kind of willingly throw it away in the first game, and now he's forced to start with it. Azul forced to start with that Mewtwo from XY Evolutions, kind of the base set throwback card. And uh, probably not the starting Pokemon that either player wanted, but hey, that's what they got. And Mark is gonna start off with a pretty strong first turn. Gets that Max Elixir Metal Energy onto the Ultra Necrozma on the bench. And uh, he did Ultra Ball away. Looks like a mysterious treasure, so I think you were gonna see probably a big Lily or a Sycamore here. And there it is, Drawing full eight. value, eight cards. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's a card that you see uh, maybe one teched in here and there. If you don't want to utilize Bridget on turn one, Lily is at its most powerful on turn one, but it's certainly not bad for the rest of the game either. <laughs> yeah, uh, but interestingly enough, Mark drew eight cards and played zero of them. So usually Ooh. after you play Lily, you're hoping to like play a bunch more cards, you know, maybe get like Inkay down, play another Max Elixir, play some anything, <laughs> but he drew eight <laughs> cards and then passed. <laughs> and uh, Azul is going to respond with that turn one Bridget. Get All some right. Zerua, some Wimpod on the board. Well, he's actually questioning if he wants Wimpod. Oh, just three Zerua. All right. Yeah, in this matchup, there's really no difference in attacking power between Zorark and Golisopod. The big difference is Golisopod does have armor press, which makes it more difficult to knock out. But otherwise, in terms of damage output, whether you're doing 120 or 150 to an Ultra Necrozma, it's a two-hit knockout either way. Yeah. But Mewtwo is going to swing with Psychic 20 damage. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're seeing this Evolution's Mewtwo is attacking in quite a few decks here and there. Yeah, mainly for Buzzwell GX, not not for knocking out Lunala Prism Star. Darn it! Wow, and yeah, Mark after a Lily for eight. Whoa! Played an energy and passed. <laughs> what? Like he a very heavy energy filled hand, a beast ring in there, but I didn't see any supporters. Yeah. What eight cards could you possibly draw that you can't play any of them besides a basic energy? That's huh. Well, unfortunate. Let's take a look at <laughs> the supporter spread. Three Guzma, two N, two Cynthia, four Sycamore. Yeah. Eh. I could see not wanting to Sycamore away a hand that big, but otherwise, yeah, looks like a lot of energy, a max potion, hmm. B strings, uh, not where you want to be. <laughs> Maybe an Inke in hand. Yeah. Not a whole lot of action, whereas Azul getting a pretty solid turn here is for Zoroark in play. Yeah, actually gonna wonder tag for Guzma and start to pressure those Ultra Necrozma on the bench. Very strong start from Azul. You know, not quite the quad stage ones he had in the first game, but still pretty good. Probably gonna be able to ride his beating for at least 100 damage, and that's really all you're going for when your opponent's Pokemon has 190 HP. 
100 sets you up for a knockout on the next turn. It's a solid start for Azul, not quite as powerful as the previous game, but if you look at Mark's side of the board, significantly weaker than his previous setup. At this oh. point, he was already able to attack and simply chose not to. Look at that, he's actually going with Mewtwo. He's gonna Psychic for 60 this time. There's 20 plus 20 for each energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. And uh, that's still gonna set up a two-hit knockout. It's gonna require Azul to find a choice ban to ride his beating for enough, but I think that's really smart. You use the single prize Pokemon to set up the Ultra Necrozma for the knockout. So even if Mark were to knock this out, and it's a painful knockout, he has to discard two energy to take one prize. It's really not gonna advance him too far in terms of winning the game. But he's gonna do it. Takes down the Mewtwo. Uh, I gotta think if you're Azul, that Mewtwo did its job. <laughs> Got 60 damage in, took a hit. <laughs> Not a bad day's work for that Mewtwo. And like we were saying earlier, there really aren't all that many one prize attackers in the deck. That Mewtwo is the only one that you actually want to attack with for Azul, unless Mark is able to bring up, you know, maybe a Zerua on the bench or a, a stranded Wimpod yep. and get a knockout with that. It's it's going to require Mark to knock out an additional GX Pokemon anyway to get the required six prizes to win the game. So Azul here is using Wonder Tag with Tapu Lele GX. He's deciding between Cynthia and N, and he knows Mark has a million cards in his hand, but hasn't played any of them. <laughs> She's like, you have a lot of cards, but I can tell they're not good cards. <laughs> so do I N or Cynthia? It looks like he decided to Cynthia. Gonna Ultra Ball at the same time, it looked like. Yeah, typically, when your opponent has eight or nine cards in their hand, it's it's an easy decision to play an N. You're mm -hmm. putting them at six cards instead of the eight or nine that they already have. But if they've shown you that they don't have anything to play, then it's probably better not to give them a new hand, even though it's fewer cards. Get those trades going. Parallel City comes down. So now Mark only has those three spots on his bench to work with and bring back hmm. up that Lunala Prism. Wow. Yeah, Azul actually going after Lunala Prism Star. Uh, it can be a pretty powerful late game card with that full moon star attack, getting a ton of energy back. It can kind of shut the door on your opponent. Mm -hmm. If you just get back like five psychic energy, then yeah, then there's an inevitable Ultra Necrozma coming. Um, so Azul says, I don't want to deal with that. And also... Doesn't want to walk into Beast Ring just yet. So opts to take down Lunala Prism Star. Makes a lot of sense. These Ultra Necrozma already are, you know, not able to attack. Mm -hmm. He has a read that Mark's hand is pretty slow, not a whole lot that he can accomplish, and there's no Malamar in play. So take out the card that could potentially be an issue later on. Yeah. Knowing that these Ultra Necrozma, you know, maybe he can power up one, get an attack with it, but it's going to take him quite a while between those attacks. Yeah, and this is super interesting. Mark, Ultra Balls, and discards Inke and Malamar. Wow. So at this point, because Azul has taken a single prize knockout, Mark's just saying, okay, I'm just not going to bench anything but GXs for the rest of the game. I'm going to make you take three GX knockouts if you want to win. And it just seems crazy to me. A, a Malamar deck just willingly throwing away all Inke and Malamar because they're going to win with Max Elixir and Beast Ring. I mean, they're very powerful cards, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to see a Psychic build not relying on Malamar's Psychic Recharge to function is just not what we expected to see at this tournament, for sure. Not at all. But Mark thinks that is going to give him the best chance to win this game. And you can see the reasoning behind that. You know, Malamar is an easy knockout. Just Guzma, Riot is beating. It's a one prize knockout. And then all of a sudden, Azuli needs to knock out two GXs. Whereas Ultra Necrozma... That's a difficult knockout. It's got 190 HP. Nothing in Azul's deck can do that much damage, so it's going to be two attacks every time to knock out these Pokemon. So when you have things like Max Potion in your deck in Beast Ring, you can afford to just throw away the Malamar and say, all right, you got to beat me. Go for it. It just has to be so uncomfortable to not be able to do all that much until your opponent takes the knockout because then your opponent is in control and playing this Ultra Necrozma deck, you want to be the aggressor. Yeah. You want to be the one taking these early knockouts, taking these one-hit knockouts with your powerful attacks. But 
Mark just can't because he doesn't have access to the energy until Azul's at four prizes. Yeah. Yeah, Mark's deck is somewhere in between like an aggressive deck and a slower deck. It's he's almost trying to wait until he can set up three straight attacks and just kind of win the game on the back of three GX knockouts. That's his game plan. And if he has to wait three or four turns to start attacking, that's fine. As long as he can set up that eventual position where it's, I have so much energy on my Aldrin Necrozma, you can't stop me from knocking out all your stuff. Very scientific term, knocking out all your stuff. Yeah, stuff yeah. is, it's in the dictionary. <laughs> That's technical. It is, yeah. <laughs> so right. we see Azul going for the same line of play as he did in game number one, weaken both Ultra Necrozma GX before letting Mark use that beast ring. And even though Mark is using this uh, unusual build of this deck, Azul has already identified what's in it. Just after game one, he's saying, oh, you're not really focusing on Malamar. You're using Max Elixir, you're using beast ring and adjust his play accordingly. That's one of the signs of a great player, being able to adapt in the middle of the game after figuring out what your opponent is doing. Even going so far as to attach a DCE to the top of Lele, start attacking with that energy drive just because it's giving him the numbers that he needs. Yep. And yeah, what's Mark gonna do? I mean, he's he can't just let his Pokemon keep taking damage. He has to fight back at some point. And we know from the prize cards that these are the only two Ultra Necrozma that Mark has access to. So once these are gone, it's pretty much the only attackers in the deck. He does have a pair of Dawnwings Necrozmas, but you know those aren't going to be very effective in this matchup. Yeah. Azul has beautifully controlled this matchup in both game one and game two. And he's going to go for pretty much the same thing we saw in game one. Now that he's going to be taking this two prize knockout and put Mark in range for using that beast ring. He's going to play N and Mark's only going to have three cards to work with. Well, this is different than game one. If Mark gets beast ring here, he doesn't even win. He mm -hmm. just gets a knockout and goes down to one prize. That's not the same thing. It was a much worse situation for Azul in game one. Looks like Inke Malamar, which we've already seen, you know, Mark does not want to use in this game. He, he yeah. ultra balled away in Inke and a Malamar earlier on. It's like, uh, why am I drawing these Pokemon? Oh, and an <laughs> N of his own, I believe, which is not very good for him right now. But maybe he doesn't have any other choice because this hand certainly isn't going to be doing anything. Yeah. Mark's just going to be in a terrible position here. Azul has, you know, navigated this entire matchup beautifully. But he does need one more benched Pokemon to get a knockout here. It shouldn't be too much of a problem for him. Trades away the Zoroark, finds that Mew EX. Probably not what he wants to play. Has the Wimpot already. <laughs> yep, can even attach to Glycopod GX. And you can see here, this is just a devastating position for Mark. So... Azul's going to take the knockout, go down to three prize cards. And then what does Mark do? If he finds a beast ring, great, he gets a knockout, but then he's left with one metal energy in play, and Azul can easily knock out that Ultra Necrozma, and he's going to be left with nothing in play. He needs some kind of massive turn here, and he does top deck Professor Sycamore, so potentially can pull off some crazy turn where if he finds another Ultra Necrozma and two beast rings, he could set himself mm -hmm. up to win, but that's just so much to ask. Well, the Ultra Necrozma on the bench, 60 damage on it, that first impression from the Golisopod, if this Zoroark gets knocked out, would come in and do 120, so he would need a Choice Band as well to actually be able to yeah. knock out that Ultra Necrozma. Yeah, choice Band or Double Clawless to Crossing Cut GX, both yeah. of those work. So it's just not a good spot for Mark to be in. We noted that one Ultra Necrozma GX was prized at the beginning. If it's still in there, then Mark is just in a whole lot of trouble. And I'm not sure what he can do to get himself out of this. Also, if he didn't find B-String, that's probably not good. <laughs> is he going... Now, you mentioned it in game number one, the, the Tapu Kier GX. Yeah. I, I think that's reasonable here if... You're not getting a knockout. Like, even if you are getting a knockout, I don't think it's good. He's going to B-string first. And I, I think taking a knockout here and leaving yourself with just one metal energy and getting knocked out, I don't think you ever win the game from that spot. So 
using Tapu Cure GX here, having a fresh Ultra Necrozma GX, that actually gives you the best chance of winning it, and you gotta go for it. He needs to be able to promote the Ultra Necrozma, take a knockout, have Azul deal 120, however much to it, not enough to knock it out, and then he needs to be able to attach enough energy to get that knockout afterwards. So this is the best plan for Mark to be able to potentially win this game. We're coming up on the 13 minute mark remaining in the round, so very unlikely that we'd be able to play out a full game three, especially at the pace that these two games have been going. Yeah. The other big thing is if Azul doesn't take a knockout after Mark uses Photon Geyser, he'll still be at three prize cards, so Mark could then B string a second time mm -hmm. and then power up for the win. So another intelligent play from Mark here using that uh, not very often seen Tapu Cure GX to heal off Ultra Necrozma GX on the bench and give himself the best chance to win this game. Now, unfortunately for Mark, his opponent has three Zorark GX in play and probably can find a Guzma this turn, but hey, who knows? <laughs> Looks like he, I believe, has double puzzle in hand. Yeah, he's just got so many cards. A wealth of options, but that's the name of the game when you're able to trade two, three times every single turn. You're going to have naturally more resources than your opponent. Yeah. He's got like 10 cards in his hand or something. To Mark's like four or five. And uh, he's also able to just filter through cards he doesn't want. All right, he can discard that Mew EX, a card he never wants to see again. Uh, looks like Azul, though, might be going for that Crossing Cut GX. He's got to be careful, though, if he does. I, I'm sure he'll see it, but oh, yes, there's the delinquent. delinquent. The Parallel City was going to stop Crossing Cut from getting the knockout, but Delinquent discards it. Forces Mark to discard three cards from his hand. And now Azul can go in for the Crossing Cut GX. Go down to one prize card, and Beast Ring will no longer be on the table for Mark. Yeah, that alternate effect of Parallel City that you don't often see the reduction on Grass Fire and Water type attacks. That's a nice recognition from Azul there. Yeah. Very easy to miss, too. A lot of people mm. see Parallel City as a one-sided card, but yeah. no, it's got two effects. And now for Mark, what do you do? Uh, your opponent has played mm. this perfectly. All you can do, I guess, is play an N and cross your fingers. I mean, you can get a knockout here, but then you just have one energy in play. You can't get a second knockout. Uh, the, the only thing I can think of is Azul did put down that Wimpod. So if... Mark is able to knock out this Tapu Lele GX and looks like he just threw his hand away with Professor Sycamore instead. But if he can knock out Tapu Lele GX and Azul can't evolve that Wimpod, he could then follow up with just a one Psychic Energy Guzma for the win on that Wimpod to take his last prize. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> sure. Unlikely, well, but yeah, there's a chance. And you got to give it to Mark as well. He's he's consistently played to his outs here, using that Tapu Cure oh, yeah. GX on the previous turn, recognizing that this Ultra Necrozma was all he had left to get the job done, and he needed to make it happen somehow. He's given himself the out, even though it is a very small percentage chance. Yeah, and you can see why so many players have gravitated, so many of the top players have gravitated towards this Zora Galisopod deck. Uh, it is very difficult to play, but it gives you so much control if you know exactly how to navigate all the matchups. Uh, just through trade, drawing all your cards, your your attackers aren't as oppressive as, aren't as impressive as like an Ultra Necrozma GX. You're not doing 200 damage in a turn, but over the course of the game, you're gonna wear your opponent down. You're gonna draw so many cards and uh, you're always gonna have that Guzmo when you need it. You're always gonna have that enhanced hammer when you need it. You're always gonna find the choice band and that consistency of always being able to do what you want to do can sometimes trump the raw power of things like Ultra Necrozma or Buzzwole even. We see a Pal Pad, another card we don't see very often. So Mark's going to shuffle in to Professor Sycamore, I guess. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he, he knows his opponent's going to play N, so shuffling two Sycamore back into his deck can at least give him a better chance to find some miracle in his deck. 
And there is the Photon Geyser for the knockout. Now, Mark needs to draw his last Ultra Necrozma. Otherwise, I don't think he's got a chance. And it looks like he got it out of his prize cards. But this is going to be it, I think. Azul is going to play an N. Mark's going to go down to one card. And really, Mark has one turn to draw some absurd combination of cards. It would need to be like... He needs to draw a Sycamore. Mm -hmm. It would need to be... Does he even have the Max Elixirs remaining in the deck? Yeah, it would need to be like Ultra Necrozma, two Max Elixirs, a Metal Energy, a Choice Band. Yeah. <laughs> it's not sounding good. It's a very demanding hand that we don't even know if he has the resources available left. Yeah. 120. We're going to see... 130 onto that Ultra Necrozma. The Cynthia picked Whoa. up and the Max Elixir. All right, well... Maybe. <laughs> Nothing on the bench to Max Elixir. Problem is there's also an armor press. So even if you go Ultra Necrozma, Metal, Double Max Elixir, Choice Band, you fall 10 damage short. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, <laughs> yeah, at this unfortunate. Point, Mark, I think Mark just has to hope that Azul doesn't find a Guzma, which is basically saying, I hope you don't have any Guzma in your deck anymore because... Azul can just draw his whole deck with trade. And when we do see, he does find the Mysterious Treasure, so he can get Ultra Necrozma, can play it down, maybe play an Energy. But this is not looking good. Just a Metal in hand. No Psychic even left in the deck, it looks like. Yikes. Maybe he's got a Super Rod somewhere. Mark's going to play it out, do whatever he can to stay in this game. Does he at least have an energy to attach? He's got a metal all the way on the right side of his hand. All right, well, you, that's something. Yeah, with no energy uh, remaining. I don't know if there's a super rod left. The only Pokemon that he has that can actually attack is Tapu Lele with energy <laughs> drive. So I guess you go for it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 80 damage thanks to the armor press reducing by 20, but it does give you a chance. Might as well go for it. Uh, yeah, looks like he's going for Tapu Lele GX Wonder Tag. Going to hit for 80 damage. And this is it. If Azul finds a Guzma, he's going to win the game here. We have one puzzle of time, and let's make it two. Like, he's going to search through that discard pile. There's Guzma. That's going to be game. And that is it. Azul Garcia Griego, the number one rated player in North America, is going to cruise to a... 2-0 victory and start off 2-0 in the North America International Championships.